attacking with good coordination. That's something that a lot of teams struggle with. It's really complicated. It's one of the things that makes Train a map that can be incredible to watch or can be really boring, depending on how good a te like the teams are at executing that. Yep. Ents are one of those teams. I mean, you saw it on the desk. They, they credited uh, they credited Ents to have maybe the best T side of all the professional teams, which is by no margin something that should be thrown around lightly. And for them to have that title is going to make this very exciting because I mean, I think the desk set up super well because for the first time we're really getting this question too about Astralis. You know, are they getting their heads? Is it is it you know, zooming back to you know three years ago? Well, you know when they did have psychological elements that hurt their performance. You know, it's it's really hard to say. Or is this the moment when they truly prove that it doesn't matter what happens, they'll always find always find a way to bounce back. We're into it. Ends versus Astralis. Ends are up a map. Can they complete it? Can they defeat Astralis on train? It starts with a pistol. And it starts with a shot in the face of Ariel. His jaw gets exploded and that's an early man advantage for Astralis. But of course, it's a pistol round. It can change very, very quickly indeed. X7's got a smoke grenade selected, which he has deployed somewhere. He's got a flash in the hole as well. The smoke's gone towards Connector, I do believe. And out comes Alexi with the P250 from Popdog. He's got range. He can one tap play people on various places on A. But the bomb seems to be heading towards B. Now, if they were trying to sell a fake, I don't really think Astralis believe it because device is rotated towards the B bomb site and now into connector after seeing nothing. Alexi still poking and prodding, trying to maybe catch out the IV player, but here comes the charge towards B. MD, the pressure is on. Great flash comes out though from Astralis. That's going to shut down pretty much everyone. Just Alexi B left, and there's too many men along the sidewalk, and that is Astralis kicking it off with the first round. And I wonder, James, if we're going to see more energy from Astralis than normal in the grand final, because right now they've got to squash, they've got to quash any doubts in their minds that Ents are going to be able to beat them here. They've got to make sure that they bring this one home. Looks like we might have just seen a hard counter on that, that executes into the B bomb site. I wonder if that was a left and right click flashbang. That was beautiful stuff from Astralis. And if, if Ents read that as a hard counter, does that kind of throw them off their game for the remainder of this map? So many questions in just one round. Not much money spent by Ents in this particular round. We've seen many force buys, but uh, there will be no grenade executed into the A site. Just a numbers game towards B to try to plant a bomb, but they gave too much faith in that Molotov. No one to cover the plant on that side, and I don't think they're going to get their bonus money. And that could make a hell of a difference. So let's keep an eye on their buy. Do they sacrifice and make A's, get some gilos? Look how jovial these guys are. We're two rounds in. Yeah, and it's so important to keep that energy up, to keep the emotions, good emotions in there to make sure that it doesn't get over you know, they don't get overstimulated at the same time you keep everyone on an even keel and everyone focused on the match and as you said that does actually change things here with with ends obviously though they didn't invest really anything so they do still have full ak's full utility pretty much i don't think it's going to change too too much and we'll have to see how they decide to start this one off one of the great things about ends is that they are so awesome when they hit the gas pedal, and they can get really fast here. And you can see Ariel straight into the Olaf Meister position. He's going to take some nade damage. You pretty much always are going to if you're going to be taking that position quickly against the CT side. That is responsible with a utility. And this position from Magisk, has he been spotted? I think, well, okay, all right. That's not a bad response from X7. He does more than spot Magisk, but Device comes to bear with the AWP. You're never going to see that one coming. That's beautiful. Your guard is down, and then so is your body because Device has taken you out of the game. Four versus four, they swap some weapons, try and get the best out of the situation and start to rotate. Will Device move further away to surprise him as the AWP? Indeed he will. Making his way towards B slash connector, basically the other side of the map. If they play Operation Avoid Device, that might be a hard task. But look at him creeping towards the bomb site on A. Alu taking him by surprise, but not quite landing the frag there. Glaive by a stop sign. Holding down the position, now they might start to worry, but they are thinning the numbers as well, Astralis. So maybe there isn't too much cause for concern. But maybe Ariel can find something if he stands up. Dupree taken out, 30 seconds. Three versus two for Astralis on the A-bomb site. Glaive smokes off of the IV position. Half a smoke on connector as well. IV, such an important area to hold one way or another. Stop a bomb plant. Zipex heard and frags. But time is still running out for this bomb plant. And who's going to do it? Alexi's got 20 HP. 
but device is now the last man standing that's a massive frag eight seconds the no scope almost the fake plant alexi gets taken out by device monstrous start and they are ready for this game Oh my god, I cannot believe how far Enz got right there and Device bailed them out. I can't believe it. Oh god, okay. <laughs> what a performance from him in this round. He's everywhere. Pulling out the USP. You could see the panic there and Alexi B right at the end. Kind of unsure as to what to do when a Device was pressing on him when he had the pressure of the time against him as well. And Enzo, they did get into so many four positions. They're going to do so again. Look how fast they are. The flashbang will go out, though, from the CT side as Alexi B charges down towards hell, trying to wrap onto these CTs. The York spray comes out. Damage is done, but the frags aren't there quite yet as Glaive does the damage. And not quite the third, but he should be setting it up for Zipex indeed. Very explosive round, but it looks like Astralis have it under control. Four versus two. A bomb plant would be a miracle at this point. X7 taken out, leaving Alu just looking to do some damage. P250, he gets a frag, at least it'll pay for itself. Nothing doing for him, though. Another round in the bag for Astralis. A great start for on train for Astralis on the CT side. They'll look to rack up as many rounds as possible, of course. Goodbye for the CTs. And same can be said for Ents now. The AKs are out along with the AWP for Alu. But Alu, he's naked. He's in the streets and he's got no clothes on and the police are looking for him. <laughs> the imagery always a strength of yours, James. <laughs> so we'll see. Ents trying to find a way to get an opening. I have to say, a lot of these rounds, they have found openings. They found forward positions. That is what a lot of teams struggle with on this map. Getting through the choke points, getting to to E-Box, getting to Hell, getting to a deep spot on Ivy. You know, these are difficult things to do against very good CT sides that have very strong utility usage, such as Astralis. But then do make it look much easier than most. We can see again, they'll creep down towards Hell as Magis will take down Alexi B. So that's the Hell position dealt with. Good work from those Orcs. The scopes really come in handy. Sergei shut down as well. It's up to X7 and Alu now. Glorious double peak from Astralis around that E-Box position. And further frags on X7 leave Alu alone with the AWP. He's got time. He can clutch the AWP, but it's so tough on train. So many angles. He's exposing himself to the player at the back trains near Ivy, unbeknownst to him. May have spotted the player on the bomb train itself, who's now repositioned. Does Magisk know that he's around that sandwich area? He's holding the angle, goes for the wide peak, gets taken out. Now, it is also potentially hard for them to trade frag based on the nature of A. But he rotates away, 35 seconds. And he will be heard soon by Zipex, who's in the pop dog position. So Dupree could rotate for a peak, but it's Ali with the AWP. So it's still dangerous territory. Again, he can't take a duel, but he's got the right weapon for the job. Going for the default plant. You can see on the radar, the flank is coming from Zipex. Hasn't quite spotted Dupree and there's Zipex from the back to keep it a clean sheet 5-0 for Astralis. Absolutely. Some of these rounds have looked dangerous, though. We're getting bomb plants, we're getting trade frags, we're getting, you know, forward positions from ends. So they are they're doing a lot right, but Astralis are proving to be very solid at the moment. So, you know, credit to them for having this strong start. So, so needed. Again, we know that Ens' T side can be really scary. They can snowball on you. And... I wonder what they'll do now, if they'll slow things down a bit. Now they'll go into their next buy. You can see they've taken a timeout now to try to, de to decide what the approach should be. And we've seen so many rounds that have been fast. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ents slow things right down. Go for an alley take. Maybe send two or three players there initially to just force away the CTs. Retake Pop Dog or ignore Pop Dog and go for the, the IV and T main split. You know, there's, these, are, these are some options that Ents may go to, you know, some of those more slow, slower split strats, as opposed to just running players out to hell, as they have been trying to do so far. So many options on a map like Train. Less options when you're limited on utility, though. Plenty of flashbangs, however, for Ents, but they don't really have the max buy in this particular round. Looking for their first round in six. You can see Alu still very, very focused. Maybe a little shaken by the start here on train. Grenades being lined up, but where will they go? 
device. Having a look, seeing a lot. That's a big headshot onto Alu. More targets for him. Sergei taken down. And Ariel still up here asking for more. Asking to be sacrificed. The cross to the bomb side will be successful. Just about Alexi left on 17 HP. The device will know he's tagged him, waiting for a peek on oil. Trying to give himself a little more cover, but there will be no peak hiding behind the smoke. There is the Lurker in X7 taken down towards the A site. Now they can collapse on the B bomb site with a man advantage. The Vice is so strong, not missing a single shot, but finally taken down by Ariel. Ariel working on the MVP of the tournament here, as discussed on the desk, and this could be a pivotal moment for Ents if they were to try to clutch this one or to succeed in doing so. And Ariel picks up another one. Magus goes down. It's up to Dupree. The Vice did so much work. He made it look so favorable for Astralis. But Ents, they pick up their first round, proving that they are indeed very resilient. Such an important clutch, James, because if they had lost that, that's 6-0 then. They needed to get on the board sooner than later, and finally they make it happen. And they've done so much damage in previous rounds that the economy for Astralis is not even that good. They're going to struggle to get a buy out here. They may, in fact, have to go for a half buy. They've bought nothing just yet. Oh, man, I thought that was going to be a double. <laughs> it may as well have been. Device is looking on point in this grand final so far, I have to say. He is. Astralis have taken a tactical timeout to discuss their options. Only a CZ has been picked up at this point, so it doesn't look like they're going for that full investment. Playing for the long term. A map down to Entz. Entz, the destroyer of streaks. Entz coming in like Brock Lesnar. I thought, you know, when I said James, oh, maybe they're going to slow things down now. They, they didn't, they just <laughs> rushed towards upper and kept the pace really fast, so... Will they ever slow things down? I, I do wonder, because... No, I think they need to identify what kind of situation Astralis are in and then choose how to deal with it. A flashbang and two CZ-75s is all that Astralis really have to offer. We have seen a few USP kills, though, outside of pistol rounds so far today. So, okay, with some pre-fire, you can spray through that wall. So even if you are doing some jiggling, you can still take one in the face, although... If you've got a helmet, you'll probably survive. Unless, of course, it's an AWP or a revolver, LOL. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, don't see this every day. Is he just going to pop up? Yeah, oh, he finds a good timing, but Sug is ready. Glaive has an angle with a USP, though. And it looks like this should be pretty easy now. They're on the bomb site to clean up. I like that they went B, James. I've, I've seen all too many rounds like this be lost for the T side when they go to IV, and you all cluster up together in these tight choke points where a bomb plant's too far away. The bomb has been planterized. Magisk will look to get something from this. For the most part, if he dies, it's $300. Of course, he manages to find SMG for that bonus money for rents. 5-2-2. Two, two. And now as Stratus are back on the buy, you see the AWP on device. He will enjoy the luxury of Kevlar. And there'll be the orgs coming out for Zipex Dupree and Magisk. It is a scoped bonanza. Everybody's wearing a loop. Three round lead for Astralis. The X7 will continue with the MAC-10. Let's have a look at the helmet situation. Only two players don't have helmets on Astralis, so this is a gamble by the man. He can try and venture into Pop Dog, for example, with it. We'll have to keep an eye on that later. It'll be Sergey above the Pop Dog with Molotovs for the time being, forcing them into the hands, the welcoming arms of Ariel. Beautiful stuff from him. Do they realize someone else is there? I think they do. Another Molotov. He's blind though. He's getting toasted. He's getting roasted. And now it's a four versus three for Rents. Yeah, now they can try to close down on to... I mean, they could go to either bomb side, really. Leave, you know, maybe go B. You can leave X7 to just lurk towards IV. I say that, you know, lurk. He's actually making lots of noise here. Or they could just go and split onto the A bomb site. There's, there's not really a bad option here for Rents, as long as they move in together and use their utility correctly and have good spacing, as they always tend to. And they, they should be fine. However, Device with that AWP, he is always a factor. And you can see he's looking to shut down Ariel. And at this point in the round, will there be a flashbang for him? Will there be a smoke to block his vision? It might not be all that likely. So I feel as though Device could play a very key factor in upsetting Ents in this particular advantage that they find themselves in. Oh, this is smart. Let Sergey make a play through B, see what he can find. Then based on this, they can make a reaction happen. That is amazing. Very smart stuff from N. Sergey has done a really, really good job here. 
27 seconds. The bomb's by main entrance to A, so rotation needs to be done. Astralis actually moving into a save position, maybe expecting that was a lurker towards A, but in fact, there was a lot more going on. It will be a tight rotation, but they'll make it. There is cover from Sergei. Oh, Walu! Again, there's this weird tick with snipers. It's so weird because you have an AWP. If you shoot the guy, they're going to die. Yet sometimes you will strafe before shooting, making yourself inaccurate to try and avoid an engagement as much as possible, even though if you're confident you're going to deliver. It kind of it's weird, like it doesn't make any sense, but it's still something that many snipers do on occasion. Yeah, I think it's one of those things, sometimes the wires get crossed, because if you're with a rifle, you're often going to be sort of you know, moving and then you kind of counter strafe and then shoot. So you kind of have an adjustment whilst you're moving. Whereas, as you say, like with Nock, you don't, you're not doing that in spots like that. So when you're just holding the angle. So yeah, it's very, uh, it sucks, but it happens it's to like the best spot. of us. And they're getting back on the board here, James. Three rounds to the five of Astralis. Astralis, you know, they looked very dominant. They had a really clean, well, I say clean start, although it was zero, they were zero, uh, five zero up, they were losing a lot of players. Ents were getting themselves in lots of positions to frag, positions to plant the bomb, positions to create pressure, and which is why as soon as Astralis lost their first round at five to one, they couldn't actually even buy. So Ents actually look looking really good on this T side right now. AWP and an org to play with for Astralis. That's about it. Maybe this is a map where the Vice can get some funky peaks and fall back, use the trains for cover before Ents go through the choke points. Some spray inviting a response, none just yet. Plenty of aggressive spots that can be taken. The Vice is pretty close to A main though, so they may hear that scope. Magisk with a raw peak, that was dirty into Pop Dog, and that's a weapon that could be collected later on should it get an opportunity. Sergei trying to make a difference, keeps some map control for them. Not much as Apex can really do about this, but report the situation to his teammates. In the meantime, Dupree's picked up the AK from Pop Dog. Now the bomb wants to make its way in, trying to avoid the spray. Going for the side plant as well, but Zipex is up top. Ding from Magisk and Zipex will finish off the job. And now things get really awkward for Ent. That bomb is in a position where it's going to be hard to get cover, even to pick it up, let alone plant it. There's time on the clock and Ariel's flank will be very important. And yeah, they have to buy time and that frag might just do the job. It's all about buying time for Ariel. Here he comes. He's going to have three to spin. There's one, the second as well. How much more damage can he find here? That's beautiful there. Now Device is in trouble. He's the only man left alive and Ariel finished it off. Oh my God. That was close. All about timing. Wonderful recovery from Entz. Not the first time they've been put in an awkward spot on the T side. I did refer to it on Nuke when I think they were on the CT side, but here we are. They survive another test and they close the gap to one. Again, that was a, essentially an eco round with a cameo appearance from an AWP and an org. And now Astralis are back on the buy, but their 5-0 streak is long gone. Early flash for Alexi B. May have had intentions to charge into the A side. He's been denied. Ariel will be fried. And it's a four versus four. That's such a big kill, though, because it, they go one for one. But look at the position on Alexi B. He's behind this smoke. He's gained position outside. And that's something that Astralis have to worry about. They've, they've got no control of the forward areas of the A bomb site towards T main and Pop Dog and E box. It's all a big question mark. Alexi B will die, but there's still a player lurking in those positions. You can see Alu's now creeping out with an AWP, and this is ends for you. They're able to creep and find these spots on the A-bomb site pretty reliably as a T side. It seems so difficult for everybody else, but nice attack from Device. The jump proving quite pivotal there to keep X7 alive, but it is an advantage here. Big one for Astralis. In fact, it's just Sergei left in a 1v4 off the plant, but it's Astralis cleaning it up. All the footballs punctured on the field of the A-bomb site and Astralis start to extend their lead again. Surviving the four players, very key. And they pick up the second AWP. There are AKs down if they want them, but it seems they're pretty happy with the Orgs. Actually, Zipex will pick up an AK-47. One taps from longer range will be favorable for him. Beautiful. I can't believe Glaive got that frag. That's, that seems like a guaranteed frag for me. And that may have changed the round dramatically, but here we are. Both teams on the buy once more, but it's going to be hard for Ents. They've got utility, they've got the smokes and flashes to take the angles away from the sniper rifles, but they've got to find the locations first. 
So, and you know, they do like these faster plays. I'm curious if they'll, you know, what they'll go back to. Hit, well, again, straight towards Olaf Meister, then perhaps pushing towards help. But Magis is holding the deep angle. There's no Molly for that just yet. Magis will get the pick onto X7 towards Ivy. So you can see the Ivy and T main split. LXCB on top of the green train. Not going to find anything. Glaive is ready for it. And right now, it looks all too predictable here for Astralis as Magis knocks down yet another player. And Alu again in a hopeless position against an entire angry Astralis. And they look back on the board here, 7 to 4, as their lead builds. You can see Hype Man's on in the back. He's basically the flavor, flavor of Astralis, keeping all the energy up. It's a beautiful shot from Magis. He's got a great spatial awareness as well. That's a beautiful shot as well. Ivy's a very hard position to play on train. And when the charge was coming in towards A-Main, we saw a glimpse of his POV. And you could see from his movement, he was very aware that there could be something towards Ivy. Has a look, quick frag. A great frag under high pressure later on as well. Beautiful stuff again. A man absolutely living a dream on Astralis at the moment. Three round lead now for Astralis as we move into the late rounds of the first half. They continue with the two AWP. And Tifex changes his position. That he does. I like this, you know, Astralis, some good adaptations. Ents really have to rethink their approach now and pull something new out of the playbook. You can see the pace is slowed down. They're not charging players to hell. And instead, they're waiting out some of the utility in which they've conditioned Astralis to throw very early on. And Magisk! Oh, how does he? I thought he was ready for that. Great shot from Alu. That's going to help to crack open the A bomb site and keep the pressure up. And that's also going to make X7's life by Ivy much easier as he looks to pressure Glaive away. But, Gra uh, but Glaive will go forwards. He's going to go aggressive. X7 will hold down that IV position. That's really important. A potential flank on the way from Dupree, but they'll need that to plant the bomb. However, the bomb's going towards the B bomb site. They're all being pulled out of position, Astralis. Apart from Zipex, the clutch minister trying to do what he can on the B bomb site. So far, so good. Doesn't last very long, though. Dupree takes down the, the uh, flanker towards the A bomb site, and Device is coming in. Not fast enough to help Zipex. He's gone, but maybe. <laughs> they could do this. He smoked off in connector for the time being. There's no one holding the ladder itself, but Dupree doesn't fancy it. And it seems that they might retreat. Yeah, this is a tough one for Astralis. Another good round coming out from Ensign. It was a round which, again, as I mentioned, is very different. And interestingly, you know, a lot of this round came down to an opportunity that came out of nowhere. You know, Elu comes into the peak, they, you know, down through the channel, all the way towards hell from Team Main, finds Magisk. And that was a really fast shot. Magisk was already sort of prepared for some of the peak from that position, but Ali was laser focused, great pre-aim. And he makes it work, gets that pick. Once that pick happens, X7 has this great opportunity, a one versus one, outplays Glaive with his utility, wins the duel, and then all of a sudden, Astralis is scra scrambling, and Ents knew exactly how to play out the rest of that advantage. So five to seven for Ents now as they make this very competitive against Astralis, but both teams with the full buy. And both teams with relatively low money. And there's that key frag from Ali. Great stuff from him. Here we go again. Okay. The two AWPs prevail for Astralis. Three rounds remain in this half. Windows being smashed. Vandals! around the pop dog position. Device waiting for a peek. There's a dirty flashbang. That's a beautiful flick though. May have seen a second player, not quite sure. No bullets fired in a trade frag attempt, however. He's there and he's gone. Minute 20 on the clock. The remainder of events all in a similar position. And it seems it may be a brute force execute into the B-bomb site now. Well, that's one of the things that N seems to do the best. And Zipex is gone. Astralis losing position quickly on this V-bomb site. Device missing a shot and pressure now. X7 going towards the smoke by connector. Device is dead. They've lost everyone towards that V-bomb site. And again, they will be routed here, having to retreat and save what they have because their money is, is screwed at this point. Ents, these savage takes are so good. They do it like no no other, James. They're so good at just moving into bomb sites together. Charging in like a Mongol horde. Ents make their way to six. Now, if the T side is to be the more difficult side for Ents, I do wonder 
what is a satisfactory number of rounds for them. Of course, eight still possible. <laughs> Great crowd here in Madrid. Now let's see what Astralis are able to do. They've got about an average of 46, 4700 on the players who fell, and there will be a rebuy. Now, if Fence can pass this test, probably got a good chance at that last round of this first half, but easier said than done. Four orgs and the AWP, a more dynamic Astralis perhaps with just the one sniper rifle. They're very well equipped in terms of utility. Four players with diffuse kits as well for what it's worth. And then go back to charging into the A site. Yeah, so back to their old tricks there. Digging themselves into Ulf Meister straight away. LXCP looking towards Pop Dog. You do pretty often suspect of, a, uh, of the Astralis player that will go to that position quickly. Glaive looks ready behind or next to that E box smoke. He's actually pushing, he might find a good timing, falling back now. That is beautiful, he baits Sergei out and punishes him. Beautiful passage of play from Glaive, but he's been abused himself. X7 going off for the AK-47, and they, oh my god, it snowballs completely out of control. Just like that, just after those two kills, and again, at the drop of a penny, Ents move in, they're so fast. Astralis off piece, hitting all the trees. Vice, the only man surviving for the time being. Doesn't look good. They know where he is. He's getting surrounded. He's just supposed to surround him. He's the police right now. But he's got almost nowhere to go. He'll have to fight his way out. Looking to take this AWP away. Hear those, heard those kind of chants all week. All weekend, rather. Device still alive, but there is a trade from Alu. Job done. Moving into the last round now, what will Astralis have to offer? I fear it won't be a lot. Yeah, they're in a pretty tough position here. Man, I, I just love this. Look how fast they are, just like that, and then everyone pounces. Just the explosiveness of ends. That's what gets, that's what gets people. And they're looking in a position now, despite starting this map 0-5 down, they're looking in a spot where they could get 8-7 on their T side of train. That is, that's really, really scary. Magis could be the one to dart quickly towards the pop dog position. Doesn't look like there's anyone to contest him just yet. And so we'll slow things down for this round, but as you know from them, it may be short-lived once they're all in position and ready to strike. It's a reasonable buy for Astralis. It's reasonable. They need to be quick on the trigger finger. And it's creeping, changing the pace. There is a CT in Sandwich. That's Dupree. He's got the sound cues. He can raise the alarm. But what can they do about it? What can they do about it? A lowly UMP trying to find a close quarters. He'll take Alu out. Sergei's gone as well. So far, so good for Astralis. Man, disadvantage friends. Quickly evened up. Now down to a two on two from a three on three, and the frags continue in favor of Astralis. Aerial one versus two, he's got plenty of time. There's the one v one, but device will be quicker. Eight to seven and a half time for Astralis. They managed to get more rounds out of this first half, but I have to say the fashion in which ends were threatening them and picking up rounds and making it close even when Astralis were winning, nothing was a given here against ends. They performed very well and the T side generally is where people struggle more, James. So Astralis have a lot to answer for moving into the second half. I feel like Ents are going to be really excited about the prospect of being able to absolutely crush this CT side and win in two against Astralis. Look at these statistics about train between these two teams, or well, for these two teams. I'm excited about those stats. They're both pretty damn high, but Ents have got uh, the longer in the tooth in that respect. So their stats mean more. They move to the CT side now. Alu, AWP, CT side, I'm looking forward to this. He's always tough to deal with. I think stylistically it's quite interesting. Device, one of the most studied snipers on train. So, but now he's on the tougher side of things. Yeah. Moving into the angle, it's going to be a very interesting challenge. And I'm, I'm calling a 2-0 at this point. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. I do think Ents have done enough on this first half, but the thing is we can never count out the quality of Astralis in any position. They've they're just way too proven and 
Honestly, you know, as one of the things that makes Astralis so good is that they can do everything. They're able to be as good at as Ents in pretty much every capacity. I would say it just depends on the day and, the, and, the, and what they choose to, what approach they choose to use against their opponents to try to abuse the style that they perceive to be the style that that opponent wants to play. And, you know, we, we heard from Chad in the first map that he feels as though the calls were kind of off for Astralis on Nuke. Maybe they're vulnerable right now, James. Maybe this is the point in which Ents is the team to be capitalizing upon that. Maybe they're ripe for exploitation. It's, uh, you're right, though. It's definitely two worlds apart. The TNCT side of train, especially. Very different beasts. And we may see the game slow down dramatically. I doubt many teams are going to play as quick as Ents. Yeah, device is landing all the things, but again, it's, it can be easier on a CT side. Now things get tough. And you wonder about the mind frame the frame of mind for Ents is, I mean, they, they, they look ready. They look pretty solid and very, very focused. As for Astralis, they're, they're the ones suffering from uncertainty. This is not the kind of normal dominance they would expect of themselves, and that may play a part in how this continues. Not too far away now from the second half. Sonic pretty chill, or maybe he's looking to just readying the whip <laughs> somebody <laughs> fails in the pistol absolutely yeah indeed it's a pretty tough spot but i can't really count i think i can't count how many times i've seen astralis in a desperate spot and in any position in the tournament and they've always always able to find their way back and and it starts with the pistol and we'll see Lexi B double flash kits. Ali with the smoke. And Ali leaving 500 in the hole. Indeed. Worth noting. Maybe it's calculated. I eco on pistol rounds, so I always have an AWP round three regardless. So if he kind of gets a kill, he's going to be guaranteed even if they lose the pistol round to get the AWP out for round three. And well, Sergey's going to get the first kill here. Or oh, well, almost get the first kill. Zipex down to 16 HP. That's not a good. Well, fun time for Zipex. He's got no he's, Kevlar as well. Yeah, and he's carrying a, a chunk of utility. So, yeah, he's paper thin in that respect. No Kevlar because he's bought a grenade, but you don't want to lose the grenades. Obviously, he would drop one, but he's carrying two. Some fake flashes, if you will, on Device and Glaive with the decoys. Never know when one of those can come in handy. I have a... I have a bind on my mouse or my keyboard for every type of grenade apart from a decoy. Me too, actually. So if I'm in spawn, it'll buy the grenades or select the grenade. And obviously outside of spawn, it will just pull the grenade out. Plenty of binds in that respect. So there is one of the fake grenades and there is a real one, if you will. The smoke grenade around the IV position and now comes the creep. Using all utility as best as possible to close the distance onto the bomb site. That's usually where the T's are vulnerable against the USPs, it's when they're at distance. So, an answer for that with the smokes from Astralis is Nixon works around the train. They spotted the play, the push as it comes in, as it closes in with the bomb in hand. Clay will take down X7. Sergey's out of the picture as well. And ends they're being splattered all over the A bomb site. Just aerial and, well, never mind. Never mind. They've been wiped out, slaughtered on the A bomb site. Astralis pick up the much needed pistol. That was really, really awesome, the way they used the utility. They had the Molotov to stop somebody peeking IV, as well as the smoke grenades to kind of force the CTs into the site, so they've got no information, and it's too risky to go back through the smoke. They just put Ents in the most awkward positions. They lose all control towards IV. There are Ts all over the train, and there's really nowhere for Ents to hide on the A bomb site. They were completely outmaneuvered. It was very, very meticulous from Astralis, very important for them. They want to win this best of three series. And that is a great way to start the second half. No investment from Ents in this round, that we can see. They've all got USPs, all getting decimated in that main position. Dupree gets taken out. It will be a brief one. Now let's see what Ents have to offer. Now let's see where that extra $500 has gone for Alu. He's got $5,100 in the bank. Train is a pretty good map to buy an AWP and not be too concerned with a lot of grenades. And indeed, he'll have the AWP and a smoke grenade. So. I feel like that's a deliberate 
kind of half buy in the pistol run from him, if you will. Yeah, to for sure. make sure he's got the AWP immediately. And somebody, not only with his, his raw skill with the AWP, but just his mind as well, you want him to have the sniper rifle straight away. Yeah, especially on this map, you know. It's, there's the uh, quick jump throw there for a deep molly towards the hell position, but Ariel's made his way past all of it. He's gone towards a deep peak on a, a teammate. This is risky, but the flash comes out, still gets one. That is not bad, to be honest. X7 up on the green train here, trying to keep control of the movement of these T players. Device swapping out for the Orc so we can get the scope action in. And three players left now for Astralis as they make their way to try to press on this A site and get more position. But amongst all the utility, it's actually proving rather difficult at this point. Everybody is on A for Ents. They are not currently concerned with the B-bomb side. You can see Sergei starting to move back now as things calm down and they don't see the bodies in the A-bomb sites anymore. That's right, they're still looking for something around main. Glaive moving towards Ivy, where he will be met by X7. He was going past the angle, I think, to pre-fire, maybe the middle of the of the Ivy position. Caught off guard there, and that leaves Zipex alone now, one versus four, without the bomb. 40 seconds on the clock, so will he choose to die on his sword and go for damage? It seems that he might. Sometimes it looks a little bit silly when you have a team in this position where someone dies and it looks like everyone's walking into angles dry. But when you go down to two or three players, especially on train, you kind of have to gamble that no one's watching the position you're coming from. And if it goes wrong, it looks a bit silly, but it's a risk you have to take. And X7, he's, he wants to close the distance here on Zipex. And he's going to do so. Beautiful work from Ents. They were in a four versus three. And after that point, they didn't lose any damage, I think, on their players, keeping all four standing, which is so important because their economy is not established at this point. And if they were to win that round with, let's say, one player, even two players remaining, it's t it doesn't feel comfortable at all. And there's a big option for Astralis to force by, keep the pressure up, deny AWPs in the future rounds for ends. But instead, four players alive, and they're pretty comfortable now as they face against a half by most likely. If we go back to the beginning of that round, you saw the Molotov from ends into a, a main was quite important. Allowed the CTs to get position, stopped Astralis from bursting onto the site. I know a lot of people at home won't know how to do that. MIBR have some really good videos on their YouTube channel and the third did a video on train which teaches you that grenade among others. So definitely look it up after the finals. Always good to learn some new grenades and a little grenade like that can make a hell of a difference when you play train. And it's two rounds behind now. We've got Astralis on the pistols, the odd grenade here and there. Now, they're good at baiting players. When, when Astralis are on a T side with Deagles, a random A main position, they're good at baiting players into very tight peaks where they're very likely to get a headshot with the Deagle. Not going for that on this particular occasion. They've got Magist running distraction. Basically, a suicide run into main while three players move up Ivy, but they are getting torn to pieces, which is expected in an eco. It's the way it'll go most of the time. Zipex will be grateful for his Kevlar, but he may not last much longer. Yeah, this is really important for Enz. Enz's objective going into that round was to lose zero players to... It's an economy-building round. And that means that for Astralis, they're not really, I don't think, thinking of too much except doing damage. They want to harm the economy and prevent it from being an economy-building round for their opponents. And so they're not even thinking about how do we get a bomb plant here. They're thinking about how can we trade onto kills. And they were unable to do so. And that's huge. That's huge for Enz. So Astralis now back on the buy and device on the AWP. He's been, all, as always, wonderful to watch and such a key player for Astralis. But this is where Enz could equalize. Oh, God, that was a close one for Sergei. Indeed, it was a lucky escape. Dragon Law not quite hitting the mark. Presence shown around the pop dog position. Some answer back from Alexei. They'll know he's close and they're creeping out, showing presence and thinking they won't dare make their way into that position. Where Ariel's standing right now is pretty much where, for the most part, the CTs won't go beyond this position very often. Very, very dangerous to do so. You can see how bad the angle is, unless they have the grenades and so on. There's a flashbang, but nothing behind it. Maybe looking for a response. Maybe Dupree would fire his weapon if he was blind, but uh, they won't get any more information from this. 55 seconds and Ariel starts to creep away. It all calms down it. 
Talked about how the, you might see sl some slower rounds here on the T side of Astralis. Just a more conventional train from them. A delayed set piece onto the A site. We'll have to see how well this goes. They have Popdog and T main to split from, and then A's to work behind as well. Not too much. There's like no counter flashes remaining for the A site, but they have position. Aerial! He's done so much damage, and now Team Main's been locked out. Glaive will make his way forward as X7 stalks Device, takes him down. Desperation plant in the smoke. Everything goes wrong for Astralis. There is end stand with four players left alive. Okay, this is getting dangerous, James, because Astralis are not doing as much damage as Ents were on their T side in these rounds that they're losing. Absolutely, and it doesn't surprise me at this point. Ents are absolutely ready. It was a nice, safe, free smoke of main that we saw. A nice setup for that. I'll have to look at that in the demo later on. That was really cool. Two and a half grand for Astralis. Pots and pans to fight with. Outside of winning the pistol, they've won no relevant rounds, really, in this half so far. That doesn't bode well. It's been a few rounds in a row for Ents, three rounds in a row, in fact. So Astralis need to show us something quickly. Obviously not right now with five Glocks. All they may show us is how to play Lemmings in Counter-Strike. Only so much they can do. Ooh, combination from Alexei. That was beautiful. If you don't have Kevlar, and the grenade hits you and then explodes. It can do up to 101 damage. So you can get two-hit combo just from the HE, but he'll make doubly sure with the org, and he'll continue to do so. Maybe Astralis needs, you know, one of those explosive rounds that we saw from Ents, you know, where they just rush the upper position. That's typically strong if the other team does not have an AWP posted up upper at the beginning of the rounds. Ali, you know, he's often going to be playing around Connector as well with the AWP, so... Denying the one plot, and that's good work there from Ents. But yeah, we'll have to see what Astralis decide to do here, whether they want to speed things up, slow things down even more, try to go for a, you know, a fake. You know, haven't really seen much in the way of fakes here so far on these two sides. They are, they are kind of hard to pull off sometimes if you haven't really established a lot of set pieces already. And so we'll get Device on the up again. He's, he's, Device has gone for uh, full nays, no Kevlar. So uh, further proves your point, James, by the AWP glass cannon. Dupree dancing around a pop dog position. Yeah, it's it's okay for device. It's better on a CT side. If you're going towards main, for example, he could just be obliterated into tiny pieces like he got hit by a planet. But outside of that, he might be all right. Ents in the lead now. Dupree showing us the spider webs. Quite nice. But what's not nice for Astralis is the current situation. They don't look likely for train at present. Now is the time to throw Ents off their game. Moving towards that main position. You can see Alexi around the E-Box. Aggressive positions for the CT side. Aerial forced away now. And Dupree tries to take him out, but he gets taken out instead. Ariel is a hard man to deal with. And Ents, most of their utility has been burned, but they are finding excellent usage for what they do have left. It was actually Astralis that had a huge amount of utility remaining, and they've done well pressuring out Ents' utility, but 35 seconds left. Oh, the two-man setup. You do not expect a two-man setup at this point of the round on Popdog. Zipex, hero mode, dropping down to try to re -contr get control the bomb once again. It's Device though who does it. 20 seconds, he's going to lock off Connector. Maybe there's a world where he does this. They're forcing their way through the smoke. He knows it! He hits the legs, but Sergei takes him out. 12 rounds for Ents, 10 for Astralis, and they are yet to answer Ents in a buy versus buy. Wrong time to be a leg man, needed to be a chess man. It didn't happen for him. And now Ents are two rounds in the lead. They're looking good for a 2-0, Dan. They're looking good for that sweet revenge they were looking for. Yes, absolutely. Let's not count our chickens before they hatch, roost, whatever the hell the term is. Astralis on pistols again. Again. Indeed. And a lot of these slow rounds haven't really seemed to have been working out too, too well for Astralis. Now, it's really hard to dissect that, you know, unless you're, you're pausing the game and taking as, as deep an analytical look as you can at all the, the small factors, but because it, it may not be a pacing issue. 
for Astralis. I feel like in the previous round, I felt like they did a really good job. It, it looked like they weren't doing very much on the map, but they were pressuring just enough that they did actually burn away a huge amount of Ents utility, and they got a utility advantage, which they then could try to uh, set piece with. But they'd lost that, you know, key positions like Pop Dog and were unable to gain them back in time. And that really what, was what thwarted their attack. Speaking of being thwarted, oh, the HG is going to do a little damage, just a little. But the Orc will do colossal damage. It's a massacre in the IV position. Just one player taken out. It is an eco round, but Astralis have to turn the tide now. And they are capable of doing this. We've seen them have longer comebacks from greater deficits. Even in this tournament, it may not have always been successful, but sometimes the pressure is what will spur them on. Can they find the key to unlock Ents' defenses here on train? If they can't, it will be curtains. Six rounds in a row here for Ents, James. The longest streak of rounds we had from Astralis on their first half was fives, and that was right off. That was off of the pistol as well. That's, that's not. That, these are all buy rounds, you know. Off pretty much the Ents have been winning. Obviously some saves as well, but but uh, you know post pistol. So I get going aggressive, looking really confident, uh, confident against Sipex, but he can't win that battle, and that might be decisive here as it gives Astralis more to work with. An opening kill. We haven't seen too, too many of those for Astralis on their T side. But Enz, there is something magical about them in this series so far. They've had a lot of strength when it comes to being down and out against the numbers and finding a way back in with some expert positioning and performances. But Astralis, a team that is so good at exploiting a man advantage and you can see that now they are moving towards the B1 side. They haven't gone for too many B rounds of late. And they are ready to go for a set piece here and looking to get Magisk in the lurking position towards T main there. Perhaps he'll go towards Pop Dog up through the halls. Into T main he goes. Alexi B spots the push. Vice with the old value as well. And looks like Ents are in a lot of trouble. And Astralis may just have claimed their first round off the back of. Getting that man advantage early on. Explosive stuff onto the B-bomb sites, what did it in the end. Just when you thought it was safe to type easy for Ents. Astralis are back. They're putting out the fire around that logo. Again, they're not too far away. There's a lot of money though for Ents, but it can disappear very quickly. Alu's almost on $14,000. Almost losing money by winning rounds. But in two rounds, that can all slip away. I think for many, James, even some of the Ents fans, it'd be very bittersweet if Ents win because that probably means we're going to hear even more people buying the Easy Friends music packs. My music has disabled that. <laughs> I will hear nothing of the sort. All right. 13 or 11 to 13, I should say, as Astralis just picked up the last round, the previous rounds, and they got to do it again somehow. They have to do it again, and they have struggled to do so, so far. But perhaps now is the turning point. Will Ents throw in an aggression that's unexpected, or will they keep things vanilla here against the Danes? Oh, no! HE's gone the wrong way, but does minimal damage in a main for Astralis. Some warbangs being attempted by Alu. He's landed them before. And it seems a take of main is in order. And that's fantastic from the CT side. Even if they don't put bodies in there, if they, can just, if they know it's going to be cleared up by those two mollies, it just causes problems in the timing of Astralis. May cause them to use utility they may want to use elsewhere. May have to assume that their, their game is kind of obvious where they want to go if they assume that whole area is compromised. So let's see what they do. They've got the numbers above B for now. There is a timing smoke grenade from Ents. Not sure if Astralis were ready to commit, but if they were, their plans will be cancelled for the time being. Four smoke grenades being held for Astralis. They might have enough for a fake and an execute, or just the latter. Lining up a smoke towards IV, I do believe. Glaive's either lining one up or he just really likes bricks. And now with two players towards that main position, they didn't go there immediately, but they are creeping around there for the time being. More smoke stand around B, and Sergei is ready for worst case scenario. Astralis, they've had some success towards B here. Well, the minimal success they have had has been towards B. We're going to see 
as Charles is throwing smokes into A, the, the real intention is behind this B bomb site. It's just Sergey Rudy there to stop it. He does get himself two kills. Will that be enough? 15 seconds less than that to plot the bomb. It's desperation mode for Astralis as they have to plot the bomb. Wrapping on to Alu finally, Glaive will find the kill and the bomb goes down, but Dupree left in the one versus two here. And he can't make it to safety. X7 covers the retreat. And that's the round for ends. 14, they are two away from taking down Astralis in this grand finals, James. Looking for the second AWP, there it is. Time to defuse the bomb. Astralis close, but post plant, they did not last very long at all. Running down the clock again, Ents ruining the timing multiple times and then ruining people. All over train. Two rounds away from that big gold trophy from the Blast Pro Madrid series title. There's still a buy though for Astralis, they're not out of this yet. Still a good buy for both squads. This might, this one may still go down to the wire. Hence, 1 0 up. And it may finish with a clean sheet, but maybe Astralis' fate is still in their control. James, 4 AK 47s and AWP. X7 has 170 ADR. That is ridiculous. He's putting in work. And Ariel has 170 ADR as well. Actually, no, I'm completely wrong, because actually, Solity Jams, James, I've lied to everybody. It's fine. I've been punished again for reading numbers, I was James. looking at the scoreboard, and I was thinking, like... <laughs> Where did he pull this one from? He, he must be getting a lot of assists. <laughs> Indeed. But the thing is, is that... What we have on hand here, once again, is Astralis. They found that success towards B, multiple rounds. They're getting the bombs down, they're getting the post plants. Even though some hasn't gone well, they're going for it again. They've got to keep it simple, but they're getting absolutely mowed down here. Glaive gets one, but that is a terrible consolation. It costed his entire team, essentially. Magic is the last man left. He's there to protect against the fight, but now he's the only thing standing between Astralis and Match Point, but he's doing the damage. He's got a minute to play with James. There is a world where Magic saves this. He must, for Astralis, he must, but Entz may deny him the opportunity. He'll smoke the bomb to collect it. The Molotov will be denied, and he's rotating straight back towards the A site, but Alu, of course it's Alu, with the AWP looking towards Connector, but he's going the long route. Is there time, however? 20 seconds remaining, he's so far away. They don't know if he's lurking around Pop Dog, so they may focus on that, but I think Ali's looking towards this main position now as spots him, looking for a re-peak. The Molotov may allow him to plant a bomb. What will Ali do with it? It's a big flashbang, rotating around, running for a Molotov. He's got five seconds to plant the bomb, but Alexi's in position. It's match point ends. It's championship point ends. Amazing stuff from ends. They've been phenomenal here. Oh my God. But to, to correct the numbers, it's, it is 100 ADR for... Not 100. For X7. Yeah. No, not 100. Just a little incorrect. 100,000, whatever I said fine. earlier. <laughs> He's definitely been putting in work in. Ariel as well, as you can see, those were, you know, two players really put into focus, into highlight here. But Astralis, their backs are against the wall here now, James. And either they're going to stand tall and fight back or they're going to concede at this point because Ensar looking so damn strong and ready for this win. And Astralis will take the Pop Dog position away. It smoked off for the time being. Three players on Pop Dog. Two players around the dumpster there looking to go through teammate. It's going to be an A set piece. Coming in, Glaive charges down towards Connector. They get the two opening kills here. Astralis in advantage. It would take something special for Ents to come back in this round. They've got special players though, X7 opening the proceedings, but he will be traded. Now what do you do, Entz? Do you play the conservative game? Do you try to do damage? It might depend on their economy. Two versus four, creeping forward is Alexi B, running distraction now. Can Sergei play off of this? He's made his way onto the bomb site, creeping around. Surely not, surely not. He's going for it. He's no. like this. There's no way. There's no way. The cover's there. I can't believe it. He's been denied just in time. Astralis by the skin of their teeth. I thought that was down, but they said no. <laughs> oh, my God. You can't do this to us, man. You can't do us like that. That is 
not acceptable. I'm so happy that I've tried to stop that, James. That was because so close. That is not the way you can lose a grand finals. That is outrageous. The Hero magic. Be released. The adrenaline had to be released. That has to be like we've won. Denied. Oh my god. Both teams back on the bye. Three more rounds. And James, he faked it at first as well. He actually faked it at first. But anyway, we're into the next round here. Astralis still fighting back tooth and nail in this one on train. It's so difficult. One of the most awkward maps to have a T side to be down like this. You have to set up your attack so much. You've got to take position. You've got all these choke points to worry about. The coordination is so finely timed. It's such a difficult T side of all the maps in this map pool that we play in competitive at the moment. And the drop comes. It's not a totem drop, it's just one man. And Ariel, he's wondering, Ooh. can I get some more out of this? Because he just ate up Glaive. And Astralis are down one man. They're playing four versus five for their life. The stats are not good when you're four versus five. Likely to go to ends. But there are some sound cues. X7 backing off from Ivy. Aerial X7, Alu taken down. A trio, a flurry of kills from Astralis. They are not done with this just yet. Dupree one tapping his teammate. Still alive though. May not matter. We'll have to wait and see. Two versus four. Alexi B and Sergei. These rounds have been expensive for Rents. What's the money looking like, Dan? It's not looking good. Most people have less than a thousand dollars, so this may be a safe situation already for Rents. Astralis, they may be growing with power, Dan. This is actually really scary. These two saved weapons are actually insanely important because Ents don't have a loss bonus. They will have one loss bonus. So that is a problem because <laughs> this will be the 13th round for Astralis and Ents are not going to really have an, any, anything to really fight with. So I don't know what's going to happen, James, but 50-15 is, is something we could see here. Definitely is. From that four versus five, they got three kills from out of nowhere. And now they're forced to save. They were so close to defusing that bomb. I feel like it was less than half a second, maybe even a, maybe even a quarter. Yeah, it was, I th he faked it, I think, at first. And, and he's realized, like, where is everybody? Yeah, he's, I can like, hold well, this. I guess I'll go back on it then. I, I think because he had a teammate covering him on Pop Dog, so his teammate's probably like, just go for it, man, just go for it. It's so outrageous, it might just work. And speaking of going for it right now, Astralis, they have they've summoned everything that they possibly can to bring themselves back into this one. And their hard work has paid off. They've they've been phenomenal. I, I don't even I couldn't even register where those three kills came from. All immediate in that previous round. And now Ents have to go for a full save. But they do have the save weapons, so those could prove very useful in keeping Astralis honest here. That said because they are going to be buying the next round regardless. And there's so few rounds left here at the end of the second half. I don't think it's going to matter too much how much damage they do against Astralis. The fans Still are the rounds. for the fire when the bomb explodes. <laughs> which is brilliant. Well, the CTs, they start this round with position. They've got two rifles. This is not a guaranteed round for Astral Astralis. True. Disaster can strike at any point. Disaster can strike at any point. Beautiful flashbangs. As far as making sure there's no cheeky play from it straight away, but there is still Sergei getting a kill and he might be able to back off. The two rifles are still in play for Ents. If Astralis tries to play this slow and they make the wrong... Oh, he gets his bell run. That could be followed up on later on. The rifles are still alive. It's a three versus three now. There might even end up being a rifle for Alu to pick up. This could still end in disaster. Absolutely, and Zipex in all those trades at the beginning of the round towards the inner area, he lost a lot of health because of Sergei. And indeed, because of those kills, Astralis lacked position on the map. And that has allowed Enz now a lot of time, additional time to get position themselves, additional time to work out how to atta tackle the remainder of Astralis. And it also bring, brings more questions to Astralis because they have less idea of where these CTs could possibly be. And there is a lot of hiding spots on this map. Alu, I think he's starting to flank. He's been hurt by device, but that thins the numbers on the B bomb site. Is this how it ends, Dan? Is this how the championship is decided? Two rifles versus two rifles. Look at the time, 25 seconds. We've got Molotovs being deployed. 
Alexi's in red with 10 HP, but the, the opportunities are running out. Look where the bomb is, it's so exposed. Is this how it ends, Dan? Zipex versus two. Championship point for ends. 12 seconds to collect the bomb. We've got Alexi B by oil, and that's it. Ends are your champions. They 2 0 the Astralis in Madrid. And not only are they 2 0 the Astralis, they have deleted the famed Astralis streak. This Spats James could usher in a new era. First draw list and also for Rens. This is a turning point here in Counter Strike, and it's, I can't wait to see where it goes for both sides. Absolutely awesome play from Ents. Don't assume a round is over because they start with only two rifles. So strong on the CT side. They break the streak on you. They break the Stralis entirely. They break their back. And I cannot imagine, Dan, the tweets that people are typing right now. Absolutely, it's so incredible to see a team like Ents, not just a flash in the pan, a team that rose in the previous major to greatness. They made the finals, they secured revenge against Astralis in the best way possible. Because they, again, I can't emphasize it enough. They didn't just beat them in a best of three, James. They didn't just take the champ this championship title from them, they took their streak from them as well. Really awesome play by Ents, all credit to them. You can see they are a very studied team, a very disciplined team, very strong players, great decision making. Doesn't matter what they start around with, they may finish it and finish you, just as they did here on train. A 2-0 versus Astralis, and it's over to Adam on the stage. Would you please give it up for your first pro series between champions? It's it! Come on, join me just here. Come on, join us here. Good job, buddy. Good job. Come this way, guys. Come this way. Make some noise for your blood. Suck it, suck it. Congratulations, what an incredible, incredible final that was. Talk us through what just happened there against Astralis. It was absolutely out of this world. Well, I think we played probably the best TS we have played so far, but we still have a bit more to give. The, those moments such as that clutch they had in that penultimate game there, what is going through the team there mentally at that moment? How do you react to those kind of situations? We are like, we are so calm. We don't, we don't let it go to our nerves. We just focus on the game, focus on the next round. Forget about the, what happened like previously and just keep our aims straight ahead. You've been in situations like this before, a match point and it hasn't worked out in your favor. How has your mentality differed this time around to guarantee you taking home this trophy? Well, we have been putting more pressure on the uh, the fact that we don't have to think about it and we just have to let it go. Just let it go and just focus on the main thing. There are still more rounds to play. We can still beat them. We have time. Let's focus on that. Nothing I mean, else. you've ended the nuke streak for Astralis. You've beaten them 2-0 in a best of three. How does it feel to get that revenge, that sweet, sweet revenge against a team like Astralis? I think like uh, after two months when I joined this team, uh, me and Alexi B, we were talking and we said we are the one that's gonna beat Astralis on the new. And lastly, you're gonna ask, how have you enjoyed your time here at Blast? How have you enjoyed performing in front of this incredible audience here in Madrid? It's amazing, it's amazing. You guys are amazing. Madrid is good. There you go. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, they have dominated the weekend. They are your Blast Pro Series Madrid champions, gentlemen. When you're ready, do go and lift your trophy. It's that time. When you're ready, do go and grab that trophy. As they rise, that trophy in the air. Please give it up for your Blast Pro Series Madrid champions. It's